What's going on YouTube? It's your girl Kwani and I'm here with Rezo Vending. Our other co-owner is my daughter Kwale and we are here inspiring mothers to pursue passive income through vending. In today's video, I'm gonna break it down and let you guys know how I started my vending machine business. So make sure you stick around so you get the full detailed story. All right guys, so back in October 2019 is when I started Razo Vending for me and my daughter. What inspired me to start a vending machine business was the fact that I was a single mom, my daughter was eight months young, and honestly, I was going through postpartum depression. Uh, I was at home, I was bored, and I needed something to drive and fuel me. I started binge watching YouTube, just like you're probably doing right now. And I landed on pages like Parker Thomas and Timo and Reyes the Entrepreneur and I watched these guys and what they were doing at their vending machines and instantly I was motivated. I wasn't thinking of postpartum depression anymore and I felt like, you know what, that's something I can do. Why I chose vending is because it was something that was flexible enough to still allow me to spend time with my young daughter and something that I can have work-life balance with. It also just gave me the opportunity to see that I can create my own income on my own time. My very first investment when it comes to the vending machine business was into candy machines, guys. You know, like I said, I had my young daughter, so I didn't even care about the snack and drink machines because I saw guys like Reyes and Parker and Timo and I saw how much work it was to haul around the drinks, haul around the snacks. And I'm thinking to myself, how am I gonna do that with a baby? So I learned about the candy machines and I said, you know what, I could do that. It's small, the investment cost was lower. Again, I'm a single mom at the time, I don't have much extra revenue. And also the frequency to service the machine was less. So for me at that time, I felt perfect. Candy machines were my first investment. Now with those three machines, did you get the results you, you were looking for? Yeah, guys, no, I did not get the results I was looking for with the three machines, but guess what? I didn't really care. For some reason, I was not driven by what is the X amount of dollars I will get. Let me tell you guys how much my first collection was from three machines and three counting machines after one month, 60 bucks. All right, guys, I made nothing. And, but at the same time, when I collected those $60 and quarters, you guys can see a picture here. Look how happy I look. I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I'm just like so proud of myself. And I'm like, you know what? This can work because I saw the proof of the pudding. All right, so from there, I started to take on more candy machines because I'm thinking to myself, you know what? I like candy machines. It doesn't require much of my time. Let's get some more. So I had a, a, a business colleague locally in my area. He was ready to sell out his route of candy machines. And so I took as many of those locations as I could get. And then instantly, within a matter of three months, we went from three candy machines to 11 candy machines. And then in a matter of a couple more weeks, we went from 11 candy machines to 15 candy machines. By my first year in business, guys, by October 2020, I had 20 candy machines. And that was just like, okay, I'm sold. I want to stay doing Vindy. What was your biggest struggle or something that you didn't expect was going to be that hard? Location, location, location. You know, that's the bread and butter of the vending machine industry, synonymous to real estate. You hear the first thing a realtor will tell you, location, location, location. It's the same for us because we need to have those high traffic, high body count, long wait hours, long business hours. We need those locations that give us more of time of opportunity and more visitors seeing our machine, walking by our machine in order for us to get the most profit return. So it's, it's finding those good locations. That is the hardest part. And can you give me maybe two, three locations that are really good? Yeah, for us in my experience, okay, when it comes to the candy machine business, the best locations for us have been restaurants, have been auto shops, and have been barber shops. Because these are places where people are what guys? Waiting around, oh my gosh, waiting for a service, waiting for someone to help them. So guess what guys? Candy machine purchases are an impulse buy. Say it with me, impulse buy. 
You didn't wake up today and say, oh my God, this quarter in my pocket is for a gumball machine when I go get my oil changed today. No, you didn't say that. But you went to the auto shop. The guy told you, okay, an hour for your oil change. You're like, ah. Oh. You have a seat in the waiting room and after you scrolled all through Instagram and Facebook, you're still bored. But you see a candy machine over there. You're like, eh, I'm bored. I'll go spend a quarter and get a gumball. So impulse purchases, and that's why we want our machines in places where people are gonna be waiting around. Now, eventually, you got into full line machines. Yeah. How did you get into it? Let me tell you guys this story, man. This story is so cool. I was going into a smog repair shop to inquire about placing a candy machine. The owner says, no, we tried that before. We don't like candy machines, but you can have that. And he points to an old school Wittern USI side-by-side -side combo machine. I'll show you guys a picture here. And I'm like, what? He's like, yeah, please, you can have it. To so have it? So long story short, I found a mover a week later. I took that machine home and that was my introduction in my garage to full line vending. I tinkered with it, I played with it. I, I went on YouTube and tried to find others who had it. I made a lot of mistakes. I fried out the dollar bill acceptor. I fried out the control board because I'm disconnecting and connecting wires while the machine is on. Side note, don't do that. <laughs> Anytime you tinker with your machine, turn it off. But these lessons are what helped me to get to where I am today. We got that machine all fixed up. You know, it was a free machine and investment wise for me, I spent about 360, $380 to get it to like full working order. And um, it was in my garage guys for seven months. Remember finding a good location is the hardest part. And I was trying and I was fed up and I was ready to quit. But then a good colleague in my local area told me, hey, here's a reference to a location. They really want a machine, go for it. So I went for it and that's where I end up putting that machine. Yeah, right now I have six full line machines across five locations. And now at the county machine level, we've, we've scaled down a lot. So as I've started to grow my full line route, I've started to eliminate county machine locations that are not worth our time or our effort. And so now we currently have nine county machine locations. What makes a good location? How much product you move? how much you make yeah. or the travel distance. Yeah, you know, each vendor's different. But if you're gonna ask me here today, Rezo Vending, I will say the traffic is what makes a good location. I want locations where there's a lot of people, different people coming in and out, all right? So not anyone who's gonna get used to the machine. So it could be a good place, 50 people, but it's the same 50 people every day. Eventually they're gonna burn out. They're not gonna to wanna to go to your, your vending machine every day. I want a place with an influx of traffic, varying people every single day. That's my number one criteria. Number two, yeah, close proximity. I want a location that's within the means of my current route, not too far. You know, uh, 20 minutes within each other. And that's good for me because it cuts down on my gas, my expenses, my time. When I, it's time to service the account. So those are top two for Razo. My ultimate goal with this business is to show my children that they can write their own checks. <laughs> that's, that's my goal, you know. I wanna create generational wealth for them. I wanna teach them entrepreneurship and basically just tell them like, hey look, you can set your own rules and, and you can create income for yourself in this world on your own terms. And I just want vending to be that key and that tool to open their eyes to say, wow, okay, my mom was able to do all these things as a vending machine owner. Whatever interest they have or whatever business they wanna pursue, I just wanna be the inspiration to that, that they, they can do it. Thank you so much for tuning in to this video. If you were inspired, if you were entertained, or if you learned something new, go ahead and hit that like button, all right? Drop a comment down below. Tell a friend to tell a friend to follow Razor Vending on Instagram like us on Facebook, and please subscribe right here on YouTube. That way, the analytics tell you when the next drop is coming. You got your notification bell, you know when the next drop is coming, and we can keep creating this content for you and all of your desires as it comes to vending, all right? Until the next one, guys. Peace.